Hey everyone, Susan Michon here, the Techie Manor, and I am host of the VA Tips, Tricks, and Advice podcast, where I share all things VA in bite-sized episodes with zero fluff, just the stuff that gets results. Please join me as we dive into the world of VA and freelancing, where I help women build freedom-based businesses with tech at the core. So let's create a business that gives you the freedom to live life on your terms. Let's dive in. Hello, my friends. Welcome to this week's episode. Today's topic is one that is near and dear to my heart. It's all about designing service packages that clients love. So I am a huge advocate for packages. And just before we dive into the meat of this episode, just so we're on the same page, packages, you are not selling time. If you're selling time, in my opinion, you're you're selling retainers. Now, I'm not going to talk about how to package in this particular episode. I have an episode on that already, which I'm linking to uh, below. So make sure you give that a listen. This one is really focused on designing packages that clients love. So first and foremost, um, and I'm going through this in no particular order, is you need to know who the package is for. So this has to do with who your target audience is and then maybe where they are in their journey. So I'll use WordPress as an example. So when I was offering WordPress um, websites on a full-time basis as a VA, I had um, three different packages. And so I had a starter package. And this is a one-page website that basically the description said, this is for anybody who doesn't have a website or is new to WordPress. So it was very clear when someone looked at all the different packages that I offered, the description helped them identify if it was for them or not. So then I had a five page option as well with a blog. And so the description was something to the effect of, this is for those of you who want to go to a more robust professional website with a blog and maybe you're moving to WordPress as well or something along those lines. And then my third one was my management package. And so the description to that would be, this is for anybody who doesn't wanna touch their website and would like me to do it for them. Again, you get the gist, but that's basically what it is. You wanna make sure that in your description, you are letting them know who the package is for. So you have your name of your package, then you'll have a description, And that description is really going to tell them who it's for. And this is where AI can really help you. If you get stuck on writing, um, just, I'm wordy. So I always use it to kind of help me shrink what I'm saying. It can do the same for you. And then you want to make sure within the package itself, you have all the goodies. The goodies means everything they get and the price. Now you can also include what they don't get, depends on the package, And I would highly recommend that in the description, not excuse me, the package outline, if you will, what are the clients responsible for? So again, going back to WordPress, I didn't do branding, I didn't do logos, I didn't do copy. So on my package, I would say client is responsible for X. So that way when they looked at the package, they would go, okay, I need to have these things. And then I could also put a footnote that says, well, if you don't have, if you need help finding someone to do your logo or do your copy, I can, you know, I can connect you or something to that matter. Um, If that's something that you offer, you could certainly um, let them know that as well. But you want to make sure that it's clear. Now, remember, packages are by expertise. So if you offer a a wide range of services, you want to make sure that you are packaging by expertise. So I'll use a, a generalist as an example. Say that you offer a ton of different admin type services. Maybe you do calendar management and inbox management, uh, travel arrangements, maybe you do customer service. Those are all different sets of expertise, even though they fall under the admin umbrella. So you could package those by expertise. So you have packages for calendar management, packages for inbox management, packages for travel, packages for customer service. What this allows people to understand is what you can do for them. Because as a generalist, you can do so many things they don't really understand how it's going to how it's going to work with them. So if you organize your packages by expertise, it makes it easier for you to sell, to market, and to get the right clients. And clarity and transparency is so crucial when it comes to your packages. And that's why I say make sure that you think of a recipe as you're kind of outlining your your package so people understand what goes in it. And then don't be afraid to add more value. Think of kind of one-offs, 
could you add a checklist? Could you add a little training video? Could you add a template? Could you add XYZ to your package to make it more valuable to them and more valuable to you? And having customer testimonials are always a great way to build credibility. And if you're brand new, that's okay. For instance, if you've built a ton of websites for yourself, that could be all part of your portfolio. And then think about ways you can do upgrades and upsells, upgrades, other offers. So again, going from, um, you know, selling a WordPress website into selling what's next, which is the management. So if you do any type of project-based work, so anything that you would build, set up, or create, what's the next thing that you could do with that client? That could be your upsell. And so one of the things I always tell people, when you create packages, you always want to have a management package. You always want a, ma a package that's going to allow you to continue to work with that client on an ongoing basis. So in a nutshell, the best thing when it comes to designing service packages that you love is have descriptions, make sure they're detailed, and package by expertise because at the end of the day, it's all about clarity and transparency. So clients understand, okay, this is what I'm getting for this amount. And you want to pack it full of value, but you don't want to overwork. So when you think of value, think of things that are one and done, templates, checklists, eBooks, how to's, guides that could increase the value of the package to your client. And then think of ways that you can upsell them into whatever is next when it comes to working with you. And last but not least, if you are selling packages on your website, what's the next thing they need to do? You know, maybe book a call with you so you can have a conversation to take next steps. Whatever that looks like, that needs to be very clear as well. One other thing is people always ask, well, should I put my pricing on my website or not? When you sell packages, I think you should have some type of price point on there, whether it's the exact or starting at. That is up to you, but that way you don't get tire kickers and people understand the value that they get. Remember, your pricing attracts your clients. Higher the price, the more premium clients you're going to have because they're looking for professionals and professionals shop just like people who are looking for low budget as well. So keep that in mind. I hope you enjoyed this um, episode today. And if you want to take it deeper, learn my proven method for packaging any service. Have a look at my lucrative packages playbook. I've given you some information below. As always, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time. Hey, thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed today's podcast, please consider subscribing for more bite-sized insights. And remember, challenges are just opportunities in disguise. Don't give up. You're closer than you think. See you next time.